Hey, hey, everybody. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for watching this video. I read an article recently that said the most successful students at a young age invest in their personal development. And that's what you're doing. By watching these videos, you're not getting any extra credit or a grade for this, but by watching these videos, you are building your leadership and you are learning about how you can be a more effective leader. So I'm so grateful for that. All right, here we go. So week two out of four, so super excited here. How to lead your heart. This is the second video of a three mini, uh, three part mini series for week number two. So I hope you've been able to see some of my other videos. All right. So today we're gonna talk about the power of relationships, conflict resolution, and how to change the world. All right, so let's get it going. I was talking to my wife because my wife uh, helps me plan a lot of these videos. And we talked about how the greatest leaders are service-minded, they're inspiring, they're motivating, they're encouraging, they're nice and they're positive, but most of all, they're relational. And that is what I want you to get from this today. When, when we're talking about how to lead with your heart, you need to be a relational person. Because always remember, without the people, you wouldn't be a leader, right? You need them, so take care of them. They are not just your members, they are your people and they are part of your core and you need to take care of them. So in my last video, I talked about how one of the greatest blessings looking back was not getting a position that I applied for and I, and I ran for as a freshman in college. It was vice president for a community service club that was super big at that time. Now, in short, why do I say this is one of the greatest interviews? Well, because it really caused um, a a change in my heart and really allowed me to reflect on who I was as a person and who and what kind of a leader I was. Now, if you ask me, when did I know I was gonna lose that election uh, while I was on stage? As I was on stage looking out to hundreds of people, I looked out and I didn't know a single person in the crowd. How can you be a leader of people who you don't even know? So what, so what happened? So after failing, I started prioritizing relationships. Not, I didn't just, talk to people in power, but I prioritized everyone. I got to know everyone. It didn't matter if you were a board member or not. I just wanted to get to know you for who you were. I started asking others for advice on how I can grow as a leader. The greatest leaders never stop learning, so keep that in mind. And number three, it goes back to what I said for number one, I started valuing people. When you value people, it looks a lot different than just knowing them or being acquaintances. You start asking them questions to you and you start realizing that they can teach you something. Those are the greatest leaders. So always remember, without the people, you wouldn't be a leader, so take care of them. We're talking about your heart, how to lead with your heart. I wanna talk about conflict resolution just briefly, and in the future, if you like this topic, let me know and I'll do more on this, but just a few things. Before we begin talking about conflict resolution, you need to understand two main principles. Number one, people are people. No one is perfect. Some people are jealous, and they'll say things that they don't really mean. So don't take it personally. Just know that when you're a leader, you're going to get that. People are people. When you spend more time with people, it's natural for them to stop appreciating you as a person. So keep that in mind. So maybe at first you're like, oh, wow, this is great. These are my people. This is fun. But in general, in life, you need to understand for everyone, it's natural for people to stop appreciating people they see a lot of. Okay? So that's not a bad thing. It's just something to keep in mind. Understand that conflicts will happen but it's more about what you will do to respond to those conflicts versus if they happen or not, because I guarantee you they're gonna happen and how you respond is everything. Love this quote down here, take a look. Rules without relationships creates rebellion. You have to be careful. When you're a leader, you can't just implement all these rules. First, you need to understand that relationships are everything. And without those relationships, you can't just tell someone to do something. If you do, they may take it the wrong way and it may lead to rebellion. So keep that in mind. There's two ways to lead a club, to lead an organization. Number one, take many preventative measures. Or number two, which I've seen a lot of, do a lot of cleanup. I'd rather do number one. It's a lot easier to do, um, to do number one in my book in the long run. But in the short run, it's easy to disregard certain things. And, and I'm telling you, sometimes it can blow up. All right. So number one, how do you prevent conflict from happening. One, value your people. It goes back to that. Do you value your people? You may be a higher position than them, but do you value them? Do you check up on them one-on-one? -on -one? The greatest leaders, they don't just go, all right, well, I'm the leader and you guys should check in with me. No, they reach out to them. They check up on them. And you need to know what's going on in their lives. Like you need to check in with them and see how they're doing. And if they're going through something, pause. And remember, 
Relationships are more important than the program. How many meetings have I led on our campus right here in which we're, and we're right in the middle of it and we've only got 10 minutes left, 20 minutes left. And we just started, like everyone just arrived for lunch and we started talking about important things that are gonna happen this weekend, just all these different things. And then someone comes in having a bad day. Someone comes in in tears. In that moment, I stop everything. And I go, hey, let's take a moment here. Let's, and let's let this board member know that we're there for them. And we're sorry that they're in this state. Now we don't force them to speak, but we stop what we're doing. What we're doing is not important. Without the people, we wouldn't even be a program. So in those moments, we can always find time to address things that are important, but we cannot miss out on those opportunities. And then later on say, oh, hey, by the way, why were you so upset? Or why were you sad? No, 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 stop. Relationships are more important than the program. Cleaning up the mess. So it may be too late. So like when you start cleaning it up, it may be too late. Missed opportunities once again. And then once again, who gets the blame? The leader does. And I'm, I'm telling you, I've gotten a lot of blame in my life, but that's fine. It comes with the territory. As a leader, it's just what it is. Don't be afraid to apologize when you've made a mistake. Now check this out. Don't be afraid to apologize when you don't make a mistake. Just apologize. The greatest leaders apologize. And they go up to them. Now, they don't go like, hey, I'm always wrong. I'm so wrong. No, like they say, hey, you know what? Looking back, reflecting on my on myself, I realized I could have done something better. That's that's an apology. And the next one, don't get mad. You know, so many times in clubs and organizations, I see drama happening. And in short, uh, the, uh, the leaders start getting mad. They're like, how could you do this to me? Right? Um, I've, I've been so nice to you. But in reality, it's not personal. You know, as a leader, it's our responsibility to be a leader. And what does that mean? It means to show grace and show forgiveness first to your members. Remember, without them, you wouldn't be a leader. So you need them. And um, yeah, just keep that in mind. So next, how to change the world. I want to quickly go into this and finish off. So today in class, we talked about, or I asked my students two things. By the way, I love teaching. And a part of why I love teaching so much is because I get to have these conversations with all of my students every single day. Every day, there's a life lesson. And today in class, I asked two questions. Number one, talk about this. How do you change the world? So they got in breakout rooms and they talked about it. And the second thing uh, they talked uh, about was I showed them a quote. It's a very famous quote. It's hurt people, hurt people. And I asked them, what does this quote mean to you? So people came back and we did, like I had them all pull up the chat box and said, hey, how do you change the world? And everyone typed in a response and the responses were amazing. I really teach, I truly believe this. I really teach some of the greatest students um, ever. And, and I'm so grateful for that opportunity every single day, uh, day to be their teacher. So they started listing things and I was like, wow, I'm encouraged, this is good. And then we went to the second quote, all right? Or this quote right here, how, what does this quote mean to you? And people talked about how, hey, in general, people hurt people hurt people. So if you look at the greatest bullies, if you look at people who are dramatic or people who are mean or people who are just mean hearted, they're mean hearted because something happened in their life. So most people talked about that in my class, which I agree with, right? I, right, uh, to an extent. In that moment, I realized as a teacher and as a person, wait a minute, I think we've got this all wrong. Are you right in that some mean people are um, hurt people because they've been hurt in the past? Yeah, you're right. But I think there's another layer to this. And what is that layer? In that moment, I realized that hurt, that quote, hurt people, hurt people, it's not just about other people, it's about us as individuals. I, I've been hurt, right? Mr. Chow, I've been hurt. Most likely you've been hurt as well. You see, it all begins with us and that realization that our actions matter and that all of us have been hurt and all of us are imperfect. And we must realize that transformation must happen in order for, uh, for us to learn how to lead with our hearts, right? See, if you wanna change the world, there's two ways you can do it. Number one, you blame everyone else and nothing changes. Oh, the world stinks. Oh, the world is horrible. All right. In some cases it is, it is, but it's not going to change anything. If you want to change, start with your own heart. And when others see you transform as a person, when others see you may have these realizations, then they're going to follow. And then you are a leader. You see how that works? So it all starts with your own heart. Thank you so much, everybody for hearing me out. Uh, if you like this video, awesome. We have one more in this, in this mini series how to lead with your hands. So join us for that video next and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.